Legend has it that, in a distant and mysterious Persia, there was a beautiful, gentle Scorpio girl who loved to dance and sing in the moonlight. Her name is Serene. In particular, her passionate dance always attracted mysterious creatures to be friends and dance with. Only, she was born with a different appearance. So most people who are always hate an alien. Mm. I am sorry. Mm. Huh? You are just the cursed son of a useless magician who failed at the hands of the devil and let her run away until now and dances here freely? Get out of my way! Don't mess with my feet. Mm. Even this fear of being chased away by everyone made her obsess even in her dreams. But at times like that, she often looked at her mother's picture and consoled herself. I know. People often have bad words about us. Only, I will prove that even though I am not in normal shape like everyone else, I will still try to fit in and do my job well. So Sarayad always tried to help people more and hoped that one day they would be able to replicate her efforts. <clears throat> One day, dancers from a faraway kingdom visited Persia, bringing feasts everywhere, making Sarayd immensely excited and silently mingled with the crowd to dance. <laughs> Fortunately, it wasn't long before she saw a child <laughs> fall in the crowd and hurried to help. However, the people around her misunderstood that Sarayd was trying to harm the child and forced her to leave. Fortunately, a strange boy appeared, chastised the group, and saved her from the siege. Then he quickly dragged Sarayd and fled. Reaching the safe place, the young man gently inquired about Sarayd. Are you okay? I'm okay, but who are you? Why would you help me? I'm Baron, one of the dancers who like to punish those who bully the weak. Also a half-blood, cursed by the devil's dark magic, just like you. Then he sadly told the truth about their curse. It turned out that many years ago, their mothers have been close friends and powerful magicians in two different countries. Because they desired to bring peace to this place, they tried to fight against the devil, but unfortunately, neither side distinguished victory or defeat. However, when the two combined spells collided, the devil gradually disappeared and did not know where it was. Their mother tried to find the devil, but all efforts were in vain, so they were sad, returned to their homeland. However, they did not realize that they had been greatly influenced by dark magic. So they gave birth to unusual children and were abandoned and driven away by everyone. So when Baron grew up, he said goodbye to his mother to find a way to solve the curse for him. After days of searching, he discovered that Persia has a magical lamp that can control the god who resided in it to fulfill his request. So Baron made his way to Persia and found Serain. I can't believe I came here to see you. Huh? If so, then let's join me and find that magic lamp and break the curse. If what Baron said is true, then I can return to my normal form. With that in mind, Serayd agreed to accompany Baron. <laughs> the thing is, neither of them knew exactly where the magic lamp huh? was located amidst huh? this vast Persia. But strangely, their two rings glowed when they touched huh? each other and turned out to be a map huh? to the magic lamp. Why would these necklaces lead us to the magic lamp? Maybe it's because our mother is a magician huh? that these two necklaces have a bit of magic when placed side by side. But whatever it is, it has helped me find out where the lamp is. Huh? Let's go find it. The two friends happily followed and finally, they reached a mysterious cave huh? with a lot of lava surrounding the magic lamp. Huh? Huh? Look, huh? this place is hard to come by. Even if I were to transform into a snake, would be too dangerous. But I think I can profitably 
use those lava stones to get the lamp. So wait, this is very risky. Don't worry. With my energetic and agile body, nothing will happen. Although Baron was worried about Serade, he trusted her and let her try. Just as she had predicted, Serade easily crossed the lava and reached the lamp. Suddenly, the lava boulder receded as Serade put her hand on it, but she also didn't give up easily and used all her strength to remove the chains from the magic lamp. Eventually, Serade was able to retrieve the lamp. Serait, thank you so much. The devil belongs to me. Devil? But isn't there a god in here? Ah! Baron, why? Why is there a devil inside? Because, originally, this magic lamp was the devil's seal that our mother created. It turned out that in that battle, the devil did not know that his lair was also trapped by their mother. So, he was locked up there forever. He used the remaining magic to hide his hiding place, so their mother, tired and exhausted, couldn't find it. Then, when he recovered some of his strength, the devil approached Baron's mother to harass her, demanding that he be released from the lamp. If Baron's mother agreed, he would help Baron become a normal person, but Baron's mother, fearing for the lives of the people, sacrificed her son. So, Baron heard the story and blamed the curse on his mother and everyone as well, as determined to find the devil to take revenge on them. One night, he dreamed that the devil showed him a sign to go to his place of detention, but he would never be able to do this if he was not lucky to meet Serait. Huh? Huh? Serait tries to stop them, but she is easily knocked down by the devil. <laughs> then the devil took Baron's order, creating terrifying creatures all over the place. As Serait struggled to reach the place, she saw the creatures harassing everyone and could hardly control them. Well, if only something could stop them, or at least make them listen to me now. Yes, my dance often makes the animals dance, so I try to attract them that way. But everything is in chaos. I can get the attention so those creatures can dance after me right now. Serade looked around huh? and saw the bells falling huh? on the ground, and she devised a plan to pin them to her feet and attract them with Sam. As she started to dance, all the mystical creatures paid attention and gradually joined in her dance. After that, Serade controlled these creatures to rush towards the devil to control him. Huh? Baron saw this and rushed to Serade's side to fight, but Serade tried to convince him. Although we both knew that people shunned us when they saw our appearance, instead of blaming and hating them, let's try together to make the people acknowledge our contributions. And if you want to destroy those people, you're no different than the people you hate the most. I... The devil saw that Baron was listening to Serai, just as he feared that Baron would lock him in the lake, so he bent over, throwing the creatures around and Serai away. He then cast a spell to destroy the lamp and Baron. Baron's mother, who has been searching for Baron for a long time, rushed to save him. Are you okay? I'm sorry to let you suffer like this, but please, even if you try to take revenge on everyone, they will still be scared and alienated from you because of what you have done. Please, stop it! After saying that, Baron's mother fainted. Baron listened to Serade's words, and when his mother was finished, he slowly learned everything. He decided to rush towards the devil to fight. But now that the lamp had been destroyed, the devil easily overpowered Baron. 
However, Serrate also tried to fight alongside Baron. <laughs> the moment they united against the Devil, their necklace lighted up, forming a stream of synergy, defeating the Devil. <laughs> After witnessing the heroic struggle of Serrate and Baron, the people began to thank them and agreed to give them a chance to integrate. <laughs> I'm also guilty of thinking only about revenge. Hatred, however, only makes us more prone to sin. Yes, that's why. If we use our heart to convert people, they will respond soon. Besides, huh? I need to study from the serrate. Mm. Although we do not choose where we are born, we choose how we live and grow. <laughs> So learning to adapt to our shortcomings and letting go of our hatreds is one of the ways we can grow and become better. <laughs> With the big lesson learned, Serrate and Baron worked together to help people and lived happily ever after. <laughs> In a fairyland, there is a beautiful bird goddess, Eldora. A bird goddess is very popular and respected by the people. She possessed the magic of light, helping plants to flourish, as well as bringing warmth to the people in the cold weather. Therefore, she was considered a symbol of the garden god here, so the days passed. Everyone lived in prosperity and warmth. <laughs> However, a great flood came and overwhelmed the people, leaving them helpless. Huh? Huh? In order to save everyone from being swept away by the flood, Eldora sacrificed part of her power to create a ring of light energy to protect the people. Huh? While she was exhausted, she was turned into a bird and drifted with the flood to the land of men. Huh? Huh? When Eldora wakened up, she found herself in the care of a strange boy in a splendid room. Eldora tried to escape, but because of her lack of strength, she was exhausted and fell. Little bird, sit still. Otherwise, your wounds will get worse. Why are you standing there? Quickly get a cure for the little bird. Huh? Yes, my lord. Hmm. And you too! Prince Amaris, I am here out of pity for your little fate to save your huh? life from the water. Huh? And you just woke up wanting to escape. And if you're still stubborn and won't sit still and let me treat you, I'll leave you to the wild animals. This person is truly detestable. Every word that comes out of his mouth is full of bitterness, and he is also hot-tempered with everyone. Once I regain my strength, I'm certain that I will punish you to avenge for everyone. However, Eldora's words were like a bird singing, so the cold prince could not understand and still came to take care of her regularly. Gradually, Eldora realized that even though Amaris was a hot-tempered barren person, the inner nature was a good one. Moreover, every night she awoke with a start when she saw Amaris having nightmares muttering that someone huh? should not force him huh? to go and woke up in huh? fear and that the deity also became more gloomy. At that time, Amaris went to Eldora's place and confided the life and death of human life to her as a way to dissipate the fear and fall asleep. Though I don't know who your nightmare is about, I hope that the power of my light can help you to dream a beautiful dream. Consider this my grateful gift to you. A few days later, Eldora's wounds finally healed, 
and she was eager to return to her own land to visit the people. Seeing Eldora's eagerness to fly away, Amaris hurriedly opened the window for her. Hmm. You are well again. You must miss your family. Whenever you wish, fly away. Although Eldora was disturbed when she saw Amaris's sad face, she was also worried about the people of her hometown, so she decided to leave. Sorry, Amaris. I will certainly not forget your grace, and if I have the chance, I will come back. After Eldora returned to the Wonderland, she was glad to know that everyone was safe. Huh? Goddess Eldora also returned healthy, and we are happy. It was thanks to a man who saved me that I was able to recover my strength and come back here. Ooh. Eldora then told everyone the story of herself and Amaris, as well as her worries about Amaris's nightmares. The people nodded to each other and consoled their goddess. We understand the goddess for the safety of the people, so we rush back to the land after recovering our strength. The old saying that if you are grateful, give back. So if you're so worried about Amaris, you should hurry back and visit him. While the goddess is away, we will take good care of ourselves and this place. Thank you very much. After I return the favor to Amaris, I will return and in that time, I will still leave half of my strength here to protect everyone. Eldora then parted ways with the people and returned to the palace where Amaris was sadly waiting for the little bird to return. At first, Amaris was happy to see Eldora, but immediately, he appeared cold and indifferent to her. However, Eldora is accustomed to these words and actions, so she still understood what the prince was thinking. Since the purpose was to repay Amaris, Eldora was always silently searching for clues about the dark smoke around him that time. However, Amaris also quickly noticed the abnormality in the room when he was absent one day. He pretended to leave the room and surreptitiously saw what was happening. Finally, he caught sight of the little bird turning into a beautiful girl and hurriedly held her back to ask questions. Who are you? Why did you turn into a little bird and search my room for something? I am the bird goddess of the Wonderland and I came here to repay you for saving my life. By finding out where the dark smoke of your nightmare came from and helping him to destroy it. Uh, but I don't want you involved in this because that smoke is death. Who will carry away my soul in a few days when I am 18. The death? It turned out that 15 years ago, Amaris' father, the king of this place, because he wanted to defeat the invading empire, protect the people, he signed a contract with death and agreed to exchange the first thing he embraced when he returned to the palace for her. The king thought this contract was too good because he only needed to hug the statue in the palace hall. <laughs> but did not expect that his only son, Amaris, because he was too eager to wait for his father to return, so he stood behind the door and hugged him. Then the king found him and begged death to spare his son's life. A deal is a deal, and I have never made an exception to that. Moreover, the king's son was very intelligent and would have been a powerful lackey for me in hell. The king insisted, even offering to trade his remaining life expectancy for the number of years Amaris would live. Okay, the life of the king is only 15 years. 
corresponding to the day Amaris turns 18. I will appear and take the soul of Amaris as agreed and leave. <laughs> After that, Death disappeared in the smoke and waited for the day to bring the soul of Amaris to hell. <laughs> Knowing his short destiny, Amaris had always treated everyone coldly since he did not want anyone involved and saddened about his death. Eldora promised Amaris that she would try to defeat death to restore his huh? life. <laughs> if it were death, she would be afraid of the light. I will use my power to protect you. In an instant, Eldora sacrificed her remaining power of light and gave it to Amaris as protection. As long as you carry this orb of energy with you, death will not be able to seize your soul. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Is it because you gave me the remaining strength that makes you weak? If so, I cannot accept. I still have half of my power left in the Fairyland. So if I go there, I will recover my power. Besides, the thing I care about most right now is your life. Whatever the price, I'm willing to pay. Eldora, but I still can't. Not giving oh. Amarius a chance to return the power, Eldora hurriedly oh. left. Eldora has sacrificed so much for me. I won't let you down. As Eldora had expected, even though Amaris was 18 years old, as long as he kept Eldora's power with him, huh? there was nothing death could do. Huh? 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 <laughs> However, Amaris was still worried about Eldora's appearance at that time. So he set out to find her. Hearing Amaris's prayer, Eldora's protector guided him to where she lived. Despite the hardships, Amaris did not give up hope of finding Eldora. As he approached, Amaris saw Eldora falling near the fairyland and hurried to hug her and inquire. Because before that, I gave you half of my power. So when this huh? blizzard came, I didn't have the strength and fall like that. <gasps> then I will give you the power of this light to heal you quickly. Ah, uh, Amaris, you put it underground and let me get it myself. This light is giving me a headache. But isn't light a symbol of strength? You should have been happy to receive it. Huh? Maybe you were. The fake Eldora smiled, transforming to Death's appearance, holding Chain from the underworld, heading towards Amaris to capture him. Please stop! Eldora! As it turned out, the real Eldora had heard strange noises outside, so she rushed to watch and was punished instead of Amaris. <laughs> Aldor, why did you do that? Because during the time I was with you, I loved you. A kind, caring person, always helping people. Therefore, I am willing to make a sacrifice in exchange for your happiness. No. I can't let you be carried away by death, because through the past, I also realized I loved you very much. At that moment, their intense tears of love fell, creating a bright light and causing death to be knocked out. It seemed that everything was going well, but death was still trying to cast magic on Eldora to destroy her. However, Amaris saw this and sacrificed his life to protect her. Ha 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 ha! At last, 
I have the soul of Prince Amaris. Hurry back to hell with me. However, death could not drag Amaris' soul to hell. It was because the love between Eldora and Amaris was so noble that his soul was already in Amaris' heart and could not leave. Why? Between two different races, two different people, two different missions, there exists such a close connection. Because it is love, a very sacred, profound thing that can defeat all difficulties and hardships in this life. Moreover, it is our differences that make this love so deep and inseparable. Witnessing this, Death greatly admires the couple's admirable sacrifice and returns Amaris's soul to freedom. <laughs> Thank you for helping me to understand how sacred is the love of all things, and I hope that you, Amaris, will continue to accumulate <laughs> virtues and create blessings so that you can live a happy hundred years with Eldora. Finally, Amaris and Eldora are together and happy forever after.